Stop looking at the sky. The threat that kills the USS Gerald R. Ford won't come from a hypersonic missile. Right now, 800 feet below the surface, the ocean is silent. But it is not empty. A Russian Yasin M nuclear submarine. NATO calls it the black hole, because once it dives, it vanishes completely. No radar signature, no heat trail, no sound. It's been shadowing the $13 billion carrier for 200 miles, waiting for this exact moment. Inside the command center, a weapons officer hovers his finger millimeters above the firing trigger. On his screen, the USS Ford is no longer a ship. It's a target painted in green crosshairs. He's not aiming for the waterline. That's amateur hour. He's aiming 15 feet below the keel, where a two-ton warhead will create a vacuum so powerful it can lift 100,000 tons of American steel into the air and snap the ship's spine. The captain whispers one word, flood. In 90 seconds, a UGST Physic torpedo will travel a miles through total darkness. It can't be jammed, it can't be decoyed, it hunts the wake itself. Most people think carriers are untouchable because of their size. They're wrong. The real question isn't whether a torpedo can damage a carrier. The question is whether 5,000 Americans can survive what happens after impact. This is doomsday scenario number two, the battle beneath the surface, where silence equals survival. And one mistake means everyone goes down with a $13 billion fortress. If you believe the US Navy has the steel nerves to survive this ambush, type steel nerves in the comments right now. Let's break down what happens when the ocean's deadliest predator hunts the world's most powerful warship. The Yasin M isn't just another submarine. It's a complete reimagining of subsurface warfare. Soviet era subs were loud. NATO called them the singing tadpoles. You could hear them 200 miles away. The Yasin M operates at noise levels NATO commanders describe as near parity with American Virginia class boats. Translation, it's quiet enough to get close. This stealth comes from two deadly innovations. First, the hull is wrapped in a skin of anechoic tiles, thousands of thick rubberized blocks that act like acoustic camouflage. When an enemy sonar pings the sub, these tiles don't bounce the sound back, they swallow it. It's like shining a flashlight into a black hole. Second is the heart of the beast. The KTP-6 nuclear reactor uses natural circulation cooling at low speeds. This means the noisy coolant pumps, the loudest part of any nuclear sub, are turned off. No pumps, no vibration, no mechanical heartbeat. It doesn't swim. It glides through the thermal layers like a phantom. The submarine carries 32 vertical launch tubes for caliber cruise missiles. But that's not what the captain wants today. Deep in the torpedo room, 10 533mm tubes are loaded with Russia's deadliest underwater weapon, the UGST Physic. This isn't a Soviet relic. This is modern. This is lethal. Wake-homing torpedoes don't listen for engine noise. They detect turbulence patterns in the water. Microbubbles the thermal signature of your propellers churning the ocean. The Ford displaces 100,000 tons. It leaves a wake like a highway. The torpedo swims across that wake in a sine wave pattern, following the disturbance upstream. The only defense is a violent turn, creating what submariners call a knuckle, a dense patch of confused water that breaks the trail. But here's the brutal physics problem. A 100,000 ton carrier moving at 30 knots cannot turn fast enough. The Ford's turning radius is over two miles. By the time the rudder bites, the torpedo has already adjusted. The submarine captain knows this. That's why he's been tracking the carrier for 200 miles, waiting for perfect geometry. No escorts between him and the target. The Ford steaming in a straight line. Flight operations underway, meaning the ship cannot maneuver aggressively. He verifies the firing solution one last time. Range. 8 nautical miles, bearing 270 degrees, target speed 25 knots, perfect. Tube 1, fire. The outer door swings open. 
compressed air shoves the torpedo free. The motor ignites. It accelerates to 50 knots, running silent, climbing toward the carrier's wake. Impact in nine minutes. But wait, let's assume the worst. Let's assume that Russian torpedo finds its mark. Let's assume it detonates 15 feet below the Ford's keel. Does the $13 billion fortress sink? The enemy prays yes. History screams no. To understand why, you have to look back at the fires of hell. 969. The USS Enterprise. The Biggie. A Zuni rocket misfires on the flight deck, triggering a chain reaction. It wasn't just an accident. It was an apocalypse. Nine 500-pound bombs detonated in minutes. The flight deck turned into a furnace, hot enough to melt aluminum instantly. 27 sailors died. The ship was engulfed in a fireball, visible for miles. By every law of physics, she should have gone down. But American steel does not yield, and American sailors do not quit. They walked into the fire. They fought the inferno manually. Enterprise didn't just survive. She sailed back to war. But critics say that was luck. So in 2005, the Navy decided to test luck with high explosives. They took the USS America, a retired Kitty Hawk class supercarrier, and towed her out to sea. The mission killed the ship. They unleashed a month long bombardment, cruise missiles, torpedoes, C4 charges planted on structural beams, underwater detonations designed to crack the hull. For four weeks, they beat that ship without mercy. She refused to die. She absorbed punishment that would have erased an entire fleet of destroyers. She floated there, stubborn and defiant, mocking the explosives. Eventually, engineers had to board her and manually blow out specific compartments just to make her sink. The lesson was written in steel. You cannot sink a U.S. supercarrier with a single hit. The USS Gerald R. Ford is the evolution of that survivability. Her hull is forged from classified high-strength low-alloy steel. She's wrapped in a void armor system that acts like a honeycomb, dissipating the shockwave of explosions before they crack the skin. So the enemy knows they can't sink her. That's why they aim to break her. Here's where the physics gets brutal. A modern torpedo detonates under the keel. The explosion creates a massive gas bubble. The ship lifts upward, bending the steel. This is hogging. Then the bubble collapses. The water vanishes. 100,000 tons of steel crashes down into the void. This is sagging. The Ford won't snap in half, but the shockwave can shatter the foundations of the nuclear reactors. It can misalign the electromagnetic catapults by a single millimeter, enough to jam them forever. The ship doesn't sink, but she stops being a warship. She becomes a floating airport with no flights, a mission kill. That's the only victory the submarine captain can hope for. But as you're about to see, he won't even get that. Here's what the submarine captain doesn't know. He's been the hunter for 200 miles. But for the last 20 minutes, he's been the prey. The moment he opened that outer torpedo door, he made a fatal mistake. Opening a tube door creates a pressure transient, a tiny sound. Imagine standing in a pitch black room in total silence. Suddenly, right next to your ear, you hear the metallic click clack of a handgun racking a slide. You haven't seen the weapon, you haven't seen the shooter, but that sound has only one purpose, to kill. In international waters, maybe it's just noise, but eight miles from a US carrier? That's not an accident, that's hostile intent. 50 miles away, a P-8A Poseidon Maritime Patrol aircraft was trailing a Sonoboy field. Hundreds of passive listening devices dropped in a grid pattern across the suspected submarine transit route. One of those buoys picked up the transient, the sound of metal sliding on metal. On the P-8A, the acoustic operator frowns. He needs confirmation. Warship 78, this is Trident 1-1. Possible transient detected request cross-check. He doesn't have to wait long. 800 feet below, the USS Indiana has been watching the Russian sub. The Indiana's sonar operator sees the acoustic spike on his waterfall display. It matches the signature of a UGST torpedo tube flooding. Con, sonar, 
Confirm transient. Sierra 1 is flooding tubes. Weapon readiness verified. Two sensors, one surface, one subsurface, both confirming the same nightmare. Confirmed hostile intent inside the defensive zone. In a video game, the Navy would fire immediately. But in the real world, we play a deadlier game called deterrence. The goal isn't to start World War III. The goal is to remind the enemy why they shouldn't. From 4,000 yards behind the Russian sub, the USS Indiana, a Virginia-class attack submarine, received the order. The captain looks at his weapons officer. We're not going to sink him today. We're going to break his will. Let them know we're here. He gives the order every submariner knows by heart. One ping only. The USS Indiana activates its active sonar sphere. In the ocean, sound is physical. A blast of active sonar at close range hits the enemy hull like a sledgehammer. Inside the Russian sub, it sounds like a jet engine screaming inside a phone booth. It is 240 decibels of pure acoustic violence. It sends a universal message in every language. I see you. I have a firing solution on you. And you are alive only because I allow it. The Russian captain freezes. He looks at his fire button. Then he looks at the sonar display showing the American hunter breathing down his neck. He doesn't scream. He doesn't panic. He is a professional and he knows he has been checkmated. He makes the only logical choice to save his $1.6 billion vessel. He snaps the order. Cold, precise. Secure tubes, flood negative tank, emergency deep, flank speed, execute. The Yasin M immediately aborts the attack. It dives hard, releasing acoustic countermeasures to cover its tracks. It doesn't run away like a scared animal. It disengages like a failed assassin, vanishing into the crowd. The USS Indiana doesn't chase, doesn't fire. The crew simply watches the red dot fade from their screens. Silent, cool, professional. They didn't need to fire a $2 million torpedo. They won the battle with a physics principle. And this brings us to the core philosophy of the US Navy. Violence is having to fight. True power is ending the fight without firing a single shot. The Virginia-class submarine fades back into the thermal layers. No victory lap, no surfacing for photos. Just a shadow slipping past the Ford's escort screen. Mission complete. The crew will never receive a medal for this. The engagement will be classified for 50 years. But they just saved 5,000 American lives. That submarine, the USS Indiana, cost $3.4 billion to build. Let that number settle in your mind. 3.4 billion. That's enough money to build 40 state-of-the-art high schools in Texas. Enough to pay full four-year college tuition for 25,000 American students. Enough to pay the annual salary of 45,000 nurses. And we have 22 of these submarines. So here's the question taxpayers ask. Why? Why not build the schools? Why not pay the tuition? The answer is brutal in its simplicity. We don't choose between submarines and schools. We buy submarines so those schools never become smoking craters. $3.4 billion isn't the cost of a weapon. It's the premium on a life insurance policy for 330 million Americans. The peace you experience right now didn't happen by accident. It exists because American sailors are patrolling 800 feet below the surface, tracking threats you'll never see on the news. They're breathing recycled air for 90 days straight, never seeing sunlight. Their families don't know where they are, and they do it willingly, because they understand that freedom isn't free. When an enemy captain looks at an American carrier, he isn't just looking at a ship. He is looking at a math problem he cannot solve. He sees the target in his periscope, but he feels the crosshairs on his own back. He knows that for every threat he sees, there are three ghosts he doesn't see. The P-8A hunting from the clouds, the destroyer screening the horizon, and the Virginia-class killer lurking in his blind spot. This paranoia, this doubt, this specific moment of hesitation is what stops wars before they start. Deterrence isn't about fighting. It's about making the enemy do the math and realizing the answer is always death. We don't pay $3.4 billion for a submarine to launch torpedoes. We pay it to create that doubt, to ensure the enemy stays home.
The USS Gerald R. Ford continues steaming into the sunset. The air wing launches sorties. The ocean returns to its rhythm. Because in the classified world of submarine warfare, nothing happened. The USS Indiana slips back into the deep. No victory lap, no surfacing for photos. Just a shadow fading into the black. And this brings us to the most important truth of all. We talk a lot about the $13 billion carrier. We talk about the $3.4 billion submarine. We talk about steel and sensors and physics. But we often forget the soul of the machine. Right now, inside that steel tube 800 feet down, there are 130 Americans. They haven't seen the sun in 60 days. They don't know what the weather is like. They missed their child's birthday yesterday. They will miss their anniversary tomorrow. They are eating freeze-dried food and breathing recycled air, living in a space smaller than a prison cell. Why? Why would anyone volunteer for a life in the dark? They don't do it for the money. They don't do it for the fame, because there is no fame in the silent service. They do it for you. They do it so that you can sleep soundly tonight. They do it so that war remains a word in history books and not a reality in your city. There is an old Navy saying, we stand the watch so you don't have to. Tonight, when you turn off your lights and go to bed in a safe, warm home, take a moment to remember the cold, crushing darkness of the deep ocean. And remember the silent guardians who are out there right now, holding the line between peace and chaos. They can't hear your applause. They can't read your comments, but they can feel your support. So if you are grateful for the shield they provide, if you are proud to be the citizen they protect, hit that like button, not for the algorithm, but as a digital salute to the crews of the silent service. This is Navy Decoded. Sleep well. The watch is set.